Hey everybody, it's Ian the Off Kilter Crafter. I hope you're having a great day today. Today I'm going to be using these Ken Oliver Color Bursts. This is uh, violet, blue, phalo green, lemon yellow, orange, and artisan crimson? I think maybe I may be reading that wrong, but anyways. Uh, Kira gave these to me. She sent them in a Happy Mail package. I'll link to that video up in the corner. Make sure to go check it out if you haven't already. Uh, you can watch me as I unbox stuff and yeah, anyways, you can check that out if you're bored or interested in checking that out. But today's going to be more of a playing around kind of experimenting because this is the first time I will be using the Ken Oliver Color Burst. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be doing with them. I have an idea of how I want it to go, but with these you just really never know what's going to happen. Um, that's kind of the fun part of them is, is they're, they... There's a lot that you can do with them and they just kind of do their own thing. You can kind of help with them a little bit, but anyways, we'll we'll kind of experiment and play around with that. I'm also going to be using this stamp set um, from Close to My Heart. It's Playful Playful Patterns D1710. I'm going to be using the uh, triangular one. So to get started today, I'm going to go ahead and grab my Tim Holtz stamp platform. We're going to move everything else out of the way while we get this all lined up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push my cardstock. Actually, I'm going to keep my cardstock a little further down than what I would normally do because I'm going to be taking this stamp and I'm actually going to be stamping it right. Woo, brand new stamp, hard to get off sometimes. I'm going to go ahead and place it right in the center. And I want to place it so that way I can get both the top and the bottom done as well. So we're going to start off with the center one and I'm actually going to turn my stamp platform around so that way I make sure and get it right in the center. You can use the stamp platform whichever way you would like. I just happen most of the time to use it with it flipping open to the edge that way but I want to make sure I'm getting everything in the right place. So I'll put my magnets down just like that. And I'll go ahead and ink it up with some Versa Mark ink. This is a clear sticky ink that will um, we're gonna heat emboss using this stamping. Now I have an awesome little tripod that holds up the camera, which you are watching from, and that's actually really helpful because then I can ink my stamp up this way. It's off camera, I know, but um, it's pretty awesome. I'm using some Canson. XL watercolor paper to stamp on today. I'm going to stamp it on just like that. Now, since we're going to be using the color burst, I want to go ahead and do all of my ink blending first. Or not my ink blending, excuse me. I want to make sure to do all of my stamping and heat embossing first. So that way, I can't tell where that stamping is at all. Goodness gracious, I am, uh, I really can't see that at all. Goodness gracious, that's very, very hard to see. So it looks like I'm going to have to go ahead and heat emboss the little bit that I just did so that way I can see where it's at. Okay, I've heat embossed. You can't even see it on camera because it's white on white, but I've gone ahead and heat embossed using that Ranger. It is the Ranger Fine Detail white embossing powder. I love that one a lot for doing detailed images just like this one. And we'll go ahead and stamp it again. I think I've gotten it lined up pretty much where I want it for this next row. I think close enough. If there's a little bit of a space, you know, no big deal. So we'll go ahead and stamp that down and we'll do some more heat embossing. I think I forgot to mention I'm using a piece of Canson watercolor. I did say that part. Uh, Canson watercolor paper, but I'm using it. Uh, this size is, how big is this? This is four and a half by five and a half? No, six. So this is four and a half inches wide by six inches tall. I accidentally stamped it a little further to the left than I had hoped for, but that's not a big deal because I'll be able to uh, cut this panel down since it's a little bit bigger than the size of an A2 card. I've done my heat embossing again and there was a little bit of an area that I missed whenever I did the heat embossing, but that's not a big, or excuse me, whenever I did the stamping, I missed that spot. Not a big deal though. 
I can work with it and we'll we'll figure out a way to fix our mistake on that. Okay, I got it positioned in the third and final spot. I need to make sure that I'm pushing all the way down so that way I don't have another oops daisy like I did just above this. And we'll go ahead and heat emboss this. Now remember, whenever you're heat embossing on watercolor paper, you don't want to put the heat on for too long. Otherwise, you'll end up causing the heat embossing to actually soak into the watercolor paper. Okay, now that I've gotten my panel heat embossed, whoa, <laughs> I throw it across my tabletop. I'm going to go ahead and use some blue tape uh, to go ahead and tape it down onto a hard surface. I've heard a lot of people across the crafting communities saying that they love um, this purple tape. I have no idea what the purple tape is, but I know that I obviously need to check it out. So I'm gonna try and find some somewhere and then I will report back to everyone my thoughts on purple tape whenever I get the chance to use it. So I'm gonna try and make this as even as possible unlike how I did whenever I stamped everything, but I will tape this down because I don't want it to warp while I'm working with the watercolor. So I want to make sure and uh, try to get this taped down as nicely as possible and as flat as possible. And it is a little overkill with two inch um, blue tape, but that's unfortunately all I have right now. So that's what we're gonna go with today. All right, I've gone ahead and taped down my watercolor paper to the board, to this um, clipboard, that's the name of that thing. And I've heat embossed, and now we are ready to use some of the Ken Oliver Color Burst. I'm gonna be using some of this blue and yellow. I think it will look great whenever you combine them because then they'll kind of make a green color. At least that's what I'm hoping for. I don't really know, this is all an experiment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little Ranger Mr. Bottle and I'm just going to go ahead and add water all across. And I'm going to be pretty liberal with the water. I want, I want a lot of water on there. Now I'm going to take the Color Burst. Oh boy. Here comes the fun and scary part. I mean it's fun and scary at the same time. So how do you open these? Oh, do they just pop? Oh, they just pop off. They don't screw off, okay. All right, here we go. I think you like kind of shake them out like that. Oh, wow. Okay, there we go. I think you like tap them and you don't squeeze them. You just kind of, wow, look at that. All right, I think I want a little more water on here. But I heard you've, you have to be careful whenever you spray, because it will spray the color everywhere. I am soaking this paper rather well. I hope this works the way I want it to. Whoa, all right. There, whoa, oh, okay, all right. So there we go. Okay, I am just gonna let this air dry. I hope I haven't made a huge mistake by leaving that big blob of blue, but I kind of like it like that. So I don't know, we're gonna see. I'm gonna let it dry overnight and just let it do its own thing and I'll take a look at it tomorrow. 
All right, I've let this dry and it's kind of interesting because there's this spot right here in the lower area and you can see right there it has this really shiny metallic look to it and I didn't mean for that to happen. Uh, you probably saw as the blue powder just went everywhere right there. Uh, definitely learned some things about doing this, uh, one of which is I used way too much water. I should not have used so much water. But I, you know, you always see people on YouTube using it and they usually do a lot of water and I was thought, I thought I was using the same amount of water but obviously it was way too much. And, uh, and then of course the blue powder just fell right there. But all in all, it looks a little weird but I think it's gonna be okay and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and keep moving forward with it. Um, it, may, it may not be perfect but um, it's at least, it's definitely unique, that is for sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my Tim Holtz platform now and we're gonna stamp the greeting onto it. I'm gonna use my Concord and Ninth stamp set. And for this one, I think I'm gonna use the Happy Birthday. And I'm gonna put it over the darker area. I think that darker area is actually gonna work to my advantage, at least I'm hoping it will, to kind of bring your eye down to it. And I am gonna be stamping over the um, already embossed, heat embossed area. So we'll see how this works. I've, I've, sometimes it can work out well, sometimes not so much. So we're, this is all just a test and a kind of playing around and seeing how it works. I'm grabbing more of Versamark ink. That's that clear sticky ink that allows you to heat emboss. And I don't have an anti-static powder tool, otherwise I would use it on this because I have the feeling it's going to stick somewhere on this, but I'm gonna be as, try to be as careful as I can to get the powder just where I need it. So let's see what happens. For the most part, it looks like the powder went where I want it to, so let's go ahead and do the heat embossing, and we may have to do a second layer. Now, I was an idiot and didn't put this in the corner like I should have, and so it is not exactly where it needs to be. Oh well, what are you gonna do? Okay, that looks pretty close. I had to uh, rearrange that a little bit, not a big deal, but I hope I got it back at least close to where it should be. We'll go ahead and stamp it again using that Versamark ink and do some more heat embossing. I'm hoping it will kind of pop off the page a little bit more. All right, I think that's as good as it's going to get, unfortunately. Not unfortunately, but I think for this one that's as good as it's going to get because if I do any more heat embossing, I'm probably going to lose some of the other features on it. So I think we're just going to go with that. And you can at least, you can at least read what it says. It's not like... I can't tell what it says there, so it's not a huge deal. Would've liked that to come out a little nicer, but you know, it happens when you're crafting sometimes. All right, I have gotten everything done to this point. I've done the heat embossing, I've done the texturing, I've done the watercolor. Now it's time to go ahead and trim it. I am gonna go ahead and uh, I think trim it maybe at four inches. Will that work on the other side? I don't think that will actually. Probably not. Hmm. I've got to figure out right where I want it cut. And I could always trim it shorter if I want to. Don't have to have it perfect. I think I'm going to trim it right about there. And I'll do the same thing on the other side, giving it just about the same amount of space. All right, how does that look? Does that look even? It's fairly even, not horrible. Could have done a lot worse, that's for sure. We'll go ahead and cut the top off as well. All right, so that's what we got. Let's go ahead and put it on a card base and see what that looks like. Well, of course, whenever I cut the top and the bottom off, it makes it too short. On one side, I was really hoping that it wouldn't do that but looks like I'm gonna have to figure out another way to mount this. Okay, I think I figured out what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna take away or distract from the colors and how beautiful they are on this. So I think I'm gonna mount it onto a piece of gray cardstock that is a little bit bigger than what we're dealing with, but not as big as the white. So that way it leaves a little bit more of a border, something like that. What do you think? I, I kinda like that, I think that'll work. I think I made it a little, how did I make it? 
too long on the bottom. Oh well, I'll figure that out in a minute. Uh, we'll go ahead and put it on like this and then I'll trim off the bottom. You know, I swear I can never put a card on correctly. I always end up making it too big on one side and too little on the other. You know, it's just a little off kilter. All right, I went ahead and cut off the bottom, trim that up, make it look nice and neat. At least that will somewhat look nice and neat. I'm gonna use my Tombow Extreme to put on this piece because it is warped. I wanna make sure that I'm getting a very, this is, this is the one thing I hate about the Tombow Extreme adhesive is sometimes when you're using it, it just doesn't want to lay down. And you have to kind of, you, you have to turn this part right here up at the very tip to get it to uh, bring more of the sticky stuff where you can actually grab it and use it on your card base. That probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but for those of you who have dealt with it before, you might know what I'm talking about. Okay, I've applied the adhesive to the back, and now let's see if we can get this centered where I want it. This is the hardest part. I think I want it right about there. All right, so this was definitely not the card that I envisioned, I, although I didn't really have an envision of a card. I love how the blue and the green mixed together, or the blue and the yellow mixed together to make the green. Uh, it's interesting, the, the really bright blue that you get whenever you uh, get a very intense spot of that blue. I learned a lot of lessons while doing this and I think I have a better idea of how I'd like to complete a card using the uh, Ken Oliver, uh, what are these, the Ken Oliver Color Burst. I think I have a better idea of what I want to do with them next time and how I want to use them, but this was a good first experiment to see kind of how they work. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that you like my video and then hopefully YouTube will then share it across YouTube land, wherever that may be. You can also hit that button down below that says subscribe. If it's a big red button, you haven't subscribed yet. And I would appreciate it if you would, if you wanna see more videos from me. You can also click that bell icon and that'll get you notified every time I post a new video or go live here on YouTube. So make sure to click that bell icon and get those free notifications. You can also get social with me on my social media links. I'll list those down in the description below. Make sure to go check all of those out. Those include Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, all sorts of great places. Make sure to go check those out. You can also say hello to me on those locations as well. I hope everybody has a great day and remember guys, keep it off kilter. Bye!